Mark Chaikin, Chaikin Analytics, joins us every other Thursday to give his technical and fundamental outlook on the markets. You heard us running. We saw you in the back <laughs> there, Mark. And, uh, I saw you chuckling there. I mean, rocket ships here. What do you do with a rocket ship like SMCI? You get Alan Greenspan on and talking about irrational exuberance. I mean, I've had this, Mark, since I bought it back in September because I thought it was could be an AI story eventually. It really sat there and did nothing for about four months. Yeah. And then started to blast off and NVIDIA started to go. Then they came out. I was obviously the guidance. You know, the, the catalyst here was the guidance was much higher than everybody expected. And they haven't stopped buying it since. I mean, I've, oh. I've sold two thirds of the position here now or maybe even three quarters of the position um i'm thinking about ringing the rest of the register what what do you do like i mean i'm not in rocket ships that often that go up you know 300 percent in six weeks do you ring the uh, register on that stuff you pick some round number like they're pushing a thousand you know sell into that craziness at some point you got to part company and say thank you you're doing the right thing from i know you know you're doing the right thing from a trader's point of view you sell a third you sell a third and you know, on the first double, you sell a third on on a quadruple, and then you look for a spike to get out of the rest. There's no right or wrong. It's a win. Yeah. That's, yeah. you know, take it to the bank. All right, Mark, what, what, what about some of your picks out there? Dennis, you want to stay on this uh, AI train here? Um, yeah, I mean, let's get his thoughts on NVIDIA here as well, because obviously everybody talks mm. about it. You know, CMBC talks about it 10,000 times a day. We talk about it at least twice a day, probably. I mean, we're all-time highs, basically a couple bucks off all-time highs here. It's kind of consolidated. It's this this one doesn't feel like SMCI, where it just went parabolic and went up 300%. I mean, it's up 40% this year. It's much more reasonable yeah. to move, but the company is enormous. What are your thoughts here, I mean, on NVIDIA? Well, I, I'd say as long as people keep comparing it to Cisco in 2000, it's okay. When they <laughs> when they stop talking that way, then you got a problem. I, you know, the AI is real. The boom is there. They have the best chips. They keep coming out with new generations and faster chips. Uh, when you have a tiger by the tail, have some sort of mental stop. But there's no place to put a stop on something like this. So yeah, it's Mark. Just, I've been seeing that a lot that people are overlaying the chart of Cisco on Nvidia or even overlaying the you know S. I think it was from Financial Times. I think it hit the one of the major media hit. I'm not sure if it's the Financial Times, but I oh, saw they've it. Been, they've well. been all over the internet for months. Uh, yeah. that, see, that's the point. They've been all over the internet for six to nine months. So uh, well, they've been wrong. Why, but why they're, wrong. In stop, they're in stop clock territory? They're going to be right twice a day. So um, hey. It's a monolith. Uh, would I buy it here? No, but I, I tell you, my wife Sandy has had it since uh, 2021. She wrote it down in the bear market and stayed, and then added. That's the key. She added on the way back out. She Very bought nice. it in uh, March of 2023. She added, and that position's up 164 percent. Mark, you watch. Is she holding? Is she still holding it all, or has she pieced out of some I, of it? I. <laughs> I twisted her arm about two weeks ago when it spiked, and she sold a third of her position. But that's it; she won't. And you had up. to sleep in the basement. I yeah. You, when it, when it kept going, going up, you had to sleep in the basement. Yeah. <laughs> but I mean, looking ahead, there are so many different ways to play AI from the consulting companies, which are going to benefit mightily because they've got to, you know, corporations know they're behind the curve and so they've got to go to people like gartner that's why gartner is off the charts but we talked about gib last week and you know the various consultants that are going to be brought in here to um tell companies what to do basically i mean some people know like service now uh, if you're looking for you know a company that got a lot of juice out of ai it's in their business it's service now so you got a little dip and you've just got to buy these things on dips, whether it's an earnings related, guidance related dip or just people taking profits. But there's there are so many different ways to play AI. I mean, there's a company that I like that took it on the chin, Dynatrace DT, after earnings. Uh, it was a great earnings report, but, uh, you know, that that's what can happen when people sour on a stock that's had an AI spike. Would you be a buyer of this DT dip? 
I, I yeah, but but very gently because it's broken below my long term trend line. So the power gauge is now neutral plus on it. It's no longer bullish. Yeah. So cybersecurity plays for the AI trade. Oh yeah, absolutely. Uh, well, Palo Alto reports next week. If you've got cojones, uh, <laughs> I don't report don't, reports don't. on the twentieth, and God knows what. Uh, yeah, though there are uh, CrowdStrike, obviously uh, Fortnet. Uh, we previously recommended, uh, and that that chart has totally reversed, uh, and. Uh, you know, these are great plays. Obviously, uh, cyber is where uh, AI is going to get really um, sexy. Uh, and really then another, sexy. Uh, another industry that's been, I guess, sexy over the past few weeks has been crypto. A lot of crypto stocks running. Mark, are you watching any of those? Coinbase up uh, big over the last week or so. Uh, I'm only watching them because Coinbase got a bullish power gauge rating on November 20th, and uh, the stock was about 100. Other than that, I have no interest. In, in any crypto at all? No, it's just it's my bias. Uh, I didn't uh, buy them on the first wave uh, two years ago and avoided the sell-off, and I'm just not a believer. I'm not the guy to go to for crypto. Yeah, I'd rather stick with the AI trade over the crypto trade right now as well. Well, I, I mean, it's totally different. One, one, you're buying a puff of smoke, and the other, you're buying some serious stuff. Uh, at at this point in the market, I use the power gauge, uh, but I'll look for formations, which is goes back to my old roots as a you know a pattern chartist. But when I see a a triple top here and the second high the third high has come under our long-term trend line which is around 190 so it stopped that rally off the earnings report stopped right on our long-term trend line now chicken and money flow is still fabulous they've been accumulating apple since uh, late october now when i say accumulate the chicken oscillator or chicken money flow was meant to oscillate around zero so if you get a sell-off of five to eight days, you would normally expect that the uh, money flow would go in the red, which it did in August and September, stayed green on every one of the sell-offs. And what that means is that people are coming in late in the day to buy it. So well, there's tell that support to when would it go red? Would took out the 180 would probably go the other way, like that huge support we're looking at? Um, money flow or the power gauge? Well, both. Well, money flow, I don't know. It, it's a dependent on volume and where it closes in its range. But, uh, you know, there are plenty of stocks with red money flow. Look at Charter Communications or any of the uh, the stocks with bearish ratings. So, uh, you know, the, uh, I'm, I'm torn between Apple uh, as an avoid or Apple as a buy the dip. But Chicken Money Flow says buy the dip, but the trend says you know, there are better places. Well, you gotta follow it. You gotta follow an indicator with your own name on it. Uh Mark, before before we let you go here, uh, I just want to talk rates for a second. We talk about the bond traders. You've had a, a decent sell-off here. You saw the reaction to the CPI number. We kind of looked at it as uh overreaction here. We're looking at steady as she goes and rates not going up, not going down a lot. Uh just give us your outlook after that little bit hotter overreaction uh, to the CPI number on Tuesday. Well, first of all, anybody who was looking for five to seven rate cuts in 2024 was smoking pot. I mean, come on. Uh, and, you know, th three to four, maybe. Now I think it's two to three and coming after um, after the political conventions in the summer. So what I like is that the market has found its footing very quickly at the 21-day average and buyers came in on um, – Tuesday in the final half hour and pushed you, oh, you pushed it up a hundred uh, almost one percent about eight tenths of a percent. So uh, I think where this is going to bite is in the construction business, uh, industry in the home building industry because they were really counting on rates uh, mortgage rates dropping uh, down into the mid six to low six and now they've ticked back up again uh to ab above seven percent so i think this is going to bite in the mortgage uh home builder stocks uh, mortgage related and uh, so you're seeing it already the chart patterns and stuff like uh dr horton uh just not looking that great 
But I think in general, the stock market is the stock market. There's a lot of money on the sidelines still. And uh, interestingly, I think the biggest key to figuring out what's going on is there's still whatever four trillion in money market or five trillion. I don't get have the number right now. So where'd the money come from to fuel this rally? Well, it's coming from foreign money. It's coming from uh, the bond market. And uh, there's plenty of fuel here. This market's not quitting. A little uh, decoupling then, maybe between well, the bonds. Oh, definitely. Stocks. Yeah, okay. and, and you. But be mindful if you're a trader, particularly that you, you're um, entering the period uh, in the election year cycle between mid-February and the end of May when you do get choppy. So right. this this is the challenging period. End of May on, you're in pretty good shape. 